Hey what's up guys this is your IT sisters and yeah you're seeing the right thing on the title and here I'm going to show you how to build your own computer. Just pick up the things you need just allocate some time for this PC assembling thing it's time to rock and roll come on guys. guys building or assembling a PC means nothing but just building up the central processing unit or the CPU of the system and when coming to building up the CPU of the system you definitely need some things the things required to do so are as follows In addition to all the above things, you'll be needing a somewhat cool screwdriver to screw things up. So get a screwdriver or I prefer you to get a multi-boot screwdriver because I don't remember what the size of the screws inside the motherboard and so just get a multiple bit screwdriver and without a screwdriver you cannot fit anything. So get one. After getting all these things, it's time to step into the real process of building your own PC. So at the beginning, start the process by just opening up your CPU cabinet or the CPU case and clean the things inside that CPU cabinet just unscrew the side panel doors and slide it a little give it a little pressure and slide it outside it will come out eventually and take it out and keep it safe yeah you'll be needing that side door to close the CPU cabinet later and inside the CPU cabinet you'll be finding a package which contains the manual for the CPU cabinet some screw bits and some cable ties you'll be needing those things in the later part of building the CPU so don't throw those things away in the trash bag most of the gaming cabinets manufacturer now has some inbuilt system fans so my cabinet also also has an inbuilt system fan and so it has some wire and the front panel has some things like audio jack headphone jack microphone jack USB ports and power button and other things so for those things you will be given a bunch of wires so at first you need to clean up the CPU cabinet so just untie the wire and keep everything outside the cabinet to make space to work with the motherboard and other things inside the CPU cabinet so at first do all these things and as you can see inside the CPU cabinet there is an empty space given at the middle and with some screw holes that is where you're going to fit your actual motherboard inside it that space should be little neat and clean after cleaning up all these things it's time to unbox your motherboard uh, don't take your motherboard out of the case we just need some things from inside the motherboard box like these things and when coming to these things these things will be given along with your motherboard or uh, a SATA cable which is used to connect your hard disk to the motherboard then you'll be given a silver plate which is called as an IO shield this thing will be needing this thing now so keep it safe near you you'll be having some CD stuffs and some manual stuffs along with the motherboard we won't be needing those things now so just keep it along with the SATA cable after doing all these things it's time to fit the IO shield inside the CPU cabinet the IO shield given along with the motherboard is not just a silver plate or aluminium plate it is actually a scale for fixing your motherboard inside the CPU cabinet yeah it acts as an alignment for fixing your motherboard inside the CPU cabinet and if all the IO ports in, in your motherboard comes out of this uh, IO shield then yeah you fix the motherboard in a perfect way so just grab that piece of IO shield and there will be a spot a long linear hole or ventilation given on the back of your CPU case or CPU cabinet and all, all what you need to do is you just need to fit it fit that IO shield into the ventilation port given on the back of your CPU cabinet and after fixing the IO shield properly in the place it's time to open some ventilation ports given on the back every CPU cabinet comes with some removable ventilation closures given on the back side of the CPU cabinet and those things are for leaving some other IO ports which you are going to connect with your motherboard later you need to open at least the first three ventilation closures given at the back of your CPU cabinet 
now we have fitted something on the back of the CPU cabinet and we broke something on the back of the CPU cabinet and now it's time to install the most important thing inside your CPU cabinet and that thing is called as the power supply unit or the PSU First, just hold your PSU and we are going to fit it inside the CPU cabinet so the PSU is the heaviest thing of all inside your CPU so just lift it with care or uh, you may break one or two of your fingers if you miss hold or misplace it so be careful while picking it up most of the CPU cabinets has the place for fitting in a PSU on the dock but some of the gaming modern gaming cabinets manufactured now has the PSU space at the bottom or other sides just pick up the PSU and just slide it at the space given for your PSU at the back of our front or side of your CPU cabinet and just make sure that the plug and the switch at the back of the PSU comes outside through the ventilation of the PSU or the CPU cabinet. Just make sure that you have fitted and aligned the PSU correctly. After making sure that everything is right inside your CPU cabinet, it's time to screw up the PSU. After aligning the PSU, just pick up the hexagonal head shaped screw screw given along with your CPU cabinet and just insert it ins into the PSU screw holes and now it's time to pick up your screwdriver. As I said screwdriver is also an important thing required to build your PC so just pick it up, tighten your PSU and just make sure that the screws are not rotating or continuously because if it's rotating continuously then you're doing something wrong and just go and roll back all the changes you've done before. After screwing up the PSU into the CPU cabinet and after making sure all these things it's time to move on to your motherboard. Now as I have made up the whole CPU cabinet thing, now it's time to come to the motherboard thing. So when coming to the motherboard, before fitting or installing anything on the motherboard, first let us have a quick overview of a motherboard. So when coming to the motherboard, the projected plastic things on the top of the motherboard or formerly called as PCI slots where you'll be placing the important hardware things like your RAM, your graphics card and additional LAN ports and some other things like that. That thing is an important one and when you go above the PCI slots there will be a square shaped large slot at the center of the motherboard and that thing is called as the processor slot where you'll be placing your processor and the PCI slot which is present at the lower end of your motherboard is a PCI express slot it has only a single lock knob and it is used for fitting a graphics card into your motherboard when going to the left side of the motherboard there will be some slots present there and those ports are called as io ports or input output ports where you will be connecting your monitor your usb cables your mouse or keyboard or whatever output or input devices you have in your hand so that thing is also important and on the right side you will be finding a large pci slot and that thing is for fitting or installing your RAM to it and that is almost it with the motherboard and the motherboard also has some other ports for connecting your wires and we will be discussing about the wiring part at the later end of this video so come on let's grab the things in your hand and let's move on at first in the motherboard first let us start by installing the processor and the RAM because those two things are the most important things in building a computer so first I am going to start with the processor when coming to the processor the central square spot or the slot at the center of the motherboard is the processor slot and there will be an indication arrow mark given at the bottom of the processor slot and that indication arrow mark is to notify you where to place your processor and your processor will also have a matching arrow mark at the end of the processor which makes you to align the processor perfectly in position and when coming to the processor very 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 carefully take the processor out of the box because the processor is not that strong a single breakage or the single crack or a scratch or a poke at the back of the processor may make your processor die. So don't even dare to touch the back surface of the processor. Very very gently take it out and without touching the back surface just lift it aside and now open up the processor slot shield and place it very 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 carefully inside the processor slot. Don't give any pressure on the top or bottom or any other positions of the processor. If you place it as per the arrow mark indication then it will go inside the slot smoothly and it will fit inside it and all you need to do is just close the processor slot shield and let's make sure that you have aligned it properly or uh, if you have it out then take your processor very slowly outside and make it realign and close the processor slot shield and yeah we are done installing the processor after installing the processor there is another thing with the processor which you will get along with the processor and the name of the thing is called as a heatsink. This heatsink thing looks like a fan and the main job or the task of that heatsink is to shoo away the heat 
from your processor. Yeah, processor is a semiconductor device and it generates enormous amount of heat. If the heat stays inside the processor, then obviously it will break the processor. So in order to avoid that breakage, we are going to use a thing called as a heat sink. The heat sink has a aluminium cum a copper coil at the bottom and as per lower gate physics and chemistry classes, copper and aluminium are good conductors of heat and electricity. In this case, we are going to transfer heat outside. In order to make that heat transfer process even more faster, I am going to use a thing called as a thermal paste. And this thermal paste thing is a non-conductor of electricity, but it is a great conductor of heat. So, if you apply it on the top of the processor, it will ensure a faster heat transfer between the processor and the heat sink. So, you need not worry about any heating damages on your processor or any spoon. Take it very gently and on the top of your processor, do not apply more than uh, two squeezes. A lot amount of squeeze may obviously damage your processor because when you place the heat sink above the thermal paste, it will overflow out of the processor face and that is not a favorable thing. So after two squeezes, just take your heat sink and place it on your processor. When coming to the Intel heatsink thing, the uh, Intel heatsink has four locks. Unlock all the locks by pulling it up and you'll be seeing four holes around the processor and that is the spot where you're going to place the heatsink on. Very very carefully place your heatsink above the processor and while placing the heatsink on the processor just make sure that the heatsink's power wire is near to the CPU fan connector given on the motherboard and lock the screws given along with the heatsink. And yeah, we are done in fitting the processor. And the next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the RAM into the motherboard. When coming to the RAM, most of the modern motherboard architecture supports DDR3 type. You need to get a RAM based upon your motherboard architecture and just take the RAM very very carefully, uh, same like the processor and you'll find a large PC slot near to the processor and that is where you're going to slide your RAM in. When coming to that PC slots, it has two locks at the edges and all you need to do is at first just uh, place the two locks away from the center and that position is called as an unlock position and just take your RAM very gently and place it inside the PCA slot just give a little pressure on the top of the RAM and when the two locks at the edges closest by to the center then yeah you're done you have fitted your RAM very very perfectly into the PCA slot and yeah we are almost done in completing the motherboard hardware things after fitting this these two things now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the processor heatsink to the power connector given very very near to the processor slot in the motherboard so just take the four pin heatsink connector from the processor and just connect it to the pin near it this will power up the processor fan and a main thing for gamers and overclockers when you're going to use a processor after getting the processor just throw away the stock heatsink which came along with the processor yeah it's not that efficient in thermal cooling get a custom liquid cooler or a copper cooled heatsink system yeah guys we are almost done in preparing the motherboard and the next thing is fitting the motherboard inside the CPU cabinet. As you remember, I have cleaned the CPU at the first part of this video and my CPU is somewhat clean now and I have made enough space for fitting the motherboard inside my CPU cabinet. You will get around 3 to 4 copper screws along with the CPU cabinet. Those things are for leveling up your motherboard. Inside my CPU cabinet, there is only screw mounts given for a smaller motherboard but this is a larger when compared to screw mounts given inside my CPU cabinet. So what I'm I'm going to do is I'm going to fit these three copper screws to make sure that my motherboard is leveled evenly inside the CPU cabinet. After fixing the copper screws, it's time to align your motherboard. When coming to aligning the motherboard, while fixing your motherboard inside the CPU cabinet, make sure that all the IO ports in your motherboard are coming outside the IO shield which we fitted earlier into the CPU cabinet. If all the ports are visible outside then yeah you are done, you have fitted your motherboard and you aligned your motherboard perfectly into the CPU cabinet. You are a genius. Now what we are going to do is as we have fitted the motherboard into the CPU properly, now it's time to screw the motherboard to the CPU cabinet. So, 4 to 5 screwings are enough to place your motherboard in position. After screwing the motherboard just make sure that it's not coming off. When it comes off then re-screw it again in order to make sure that motherboard is not falling from the CPU cabinet. After screwing up the thing yeah we are made really good progress in building your PC. Now with these two things and with little wiring yeah your computer will run somewhat properly but this is not a complete computer. So now what I am going to show you is it's a gamers and content creator thing and here I am going to show you how to install your graphics card inside your motherboard. The first PCA slot uh, and the second PCA slots are compatible with the graphics card but 
as I have removed the first three ventilation ports away from the CPU cabinet, I'm going to install my graphics card at the first PCI Express slot. Take your graphics card out of the box carefully and this graphics card installing thing is same as that of installing your RAM. All you need to do is just look at the notch at the bottom of the graphics card and just align it with the matching notch given at the PCI Express slot. And when you fix it real hard, the lock at the edge of the PC Express slot will automatically hold the graphics card to its position. So yeah, you're done in fixing your graphics card, you're done in fitting your processor and RAM. You're almost done with making up your whole motherboard thing. Now it's the time to give power through everything inside your motherboard and CPU cabinet. I would like to call this part as the most complex part in building your PC. And this part is called as wiring. Before wiring, just take the manual which came along with your motherboard and have a quick look at it because you will be needing those manual scripts in order to connect some of the wires to the motherboard. After that, yeah, I am going to walk you through the wiring process. So I am going to start the process by connecting the main 80x24 pin power connector to the motherboard. This pin will be the largest pin in your PSU connector and just grab this pin and, and what this thing is going to do is this is going to power up your whole motherboard. So And just take this connector and just find a 24 pin matching slot given at your motherboard. It will be really really large uh, connector inside your motherboard so you will find it very very easily and after finding it just grab the connector and place it in position very very carefully and after connecting the main ATX24 pin connected to your motherboard the next thing is to grab the front panel connector that is the front panel USB connector this front panel USB 3.0 connector will be the largest front panel connector in your CPU cabinet just pick that one and you will find the matching slot very very near to your recent that ATX24 pin connector just grab that USB 3.0 connector and fix it in the USB 3.0 slot given in your motherboard and these pins are all also not so strong and if you break it nothing will happen to your motherboard but you cannot use your USB 3.0 pin forever now after connecting the USB 3.0 and the main ATX24 pin power connector, now it's time to power up your graphics card. Most of the graphics card in market uses a 6 pin PCIe connector and some of the graphics card uses a 8 pin PCIe connector. Anyway your PSU will have a 6 plus 2 pin connector and if your graphics card is compatible with the 8 pin connection then just connect the 6 plus 2 pin and make it as 8. This thing also should be done very carefully. The graphics card will be more expensive so don't mess up with anything and so it's time to cool down yourself and your system. So most of the CPU cabinets comes with a stock cooling fan and some of the CPU cabinet doesn't have this facility and if your CPU cabinet have inbuilt stock fans inside it then there will be a 3 or 4 pin connector given along with the CPU fan. Your CPU cabinet also comes with the USB 2.0 ports too. So now it's the time to power up those things. Just pick up a USB 2.0 connector. It, it will be very little when compared to the USB 3.0 connector. Just pick that one and near your PCIe Express slot that is uh, your graphics card slot you will find the F USB 1, 2 and 3 slots. Just pick that USB 2.0 connector and, and connect it. It will go only in a single way so you will not be confused while fixing this. After fixing the front panel USB 2.0 connector, just pick up the front panel HD audio connector. This thing is used to power up your front panel headphone connector and microphone connector. And you will find the slot for connecting this thing near to the graphics card. So if you cannot find this thing then just go through your motherboard manual. The placement of the slots may differ from motherboard to motherboard. Now we are almost done with connecting most of the things. But I have left a thing and that thing is also the most important thing in your computer and that thing is called as a secondary storage device and coming to the secondary storage device things now most of the users are using SSDs but uh, hard disks are the most preferred ones by most of the common users. When coming to the hard disk thing, your hard disk slot or the hard disk placement position will be given at the corners of your CPU cabinet. Most of the gaming cabinets now comes with a new thing called as a hard disk dock which is nothing but a plastic sliding thing given along with your CPU cabinet. All you need to do is just pick your hard disk and just fix your hard disk inside the dock and if you slide it in, yeah, you are set. Your hard disk will be in position. But in all the CPU cabinets, this dock facility will not be present. So for those cabinet users, 
you will find a large space for installing the hard disk in your cabinet. All you need to do is, there will be screws given along with your cabinet too. Just pick your hard disk, insert it into the position and screw it. You will be given a SATA connector along with your motherboard. The SATA connector will be a large uh, ribbon shaped wire and it will not be like a wire, it will be like a USB connector. And there will be two ports at the back of your hard disk, a larger port and a smaller port. Both the ports will be in the same shape but the size differs and the first port, the largest one is for powering up the hard disk and the next thing is for connecting the hard disk with the motherboard. Just pick up the SATA connector which came along with your motherboard and fix one end of the SATA connector to the hard disk SATA connection port and the other end goes to the motherboard SATA connector. After connecting the SATA cable, it's time to power up your hard disk. For powering up your hard disk, you should find a SATA power connector in your PSU. Every PSU has a thing to power up your hard disk, your CD or DVD or optical drives and SSDs. All the architectures are same and all the wires are same for all the devices. So just pick that SATA power connector which came along with your PSU. It looks something like that and plug this thing into the larger power connector port at the back of your hard disk. Press the power connector, put pressure on the power connector until it goes into place. In the wiring part, we have completed almost all the things, not all the things, almost 90% of the things. But when coming to this thing, this thing is the most uh, patient tester of connecting the wires to the motherboard. And this part is called as connecting your F-panel wires to your motherboard and the F-panel wires are little wires which will be given along with your CPU cabinet and sorry for the poor video quality because my tripod stand is real small. Pick up your F-panel wire connectors from the front cabinet that is from your CPU cabinet. For this part you definitely need to refer your motherboard manual. Usually colored wires in the front panel connector will be positive terminal and the black or the white wire will be a negative terminal. So before connecting this thing just go through your manual and just fix it in position. First comes the power LED connector. This thing will power up your power buttons LED. Next to the power LED connector just pick up the power switch connector. This power switch connector makes your system boot because this powers up your CPU's power button. I think it's for powering up the CPU power button. I'm not clear. I'm not sure. But yeah, it's given like that. So after connecting these power things, you will be given another small thing along with your CPU cabinet and it will be marked as a speaker. This thing will be funny and small. This CPU speaker will make funny beep noises when something goes on inside your CPU. Just pick that one and near to the power switch and the power LED connector, place this one. And yeah, we are almost done with the F panel connectors and yeah, we, I have almost connected all the things to the F-panel connector by now. So, we are, nine, we are 90% completed in wiring all the things up. Last but not the least, as I have started with the processor, I am going to end with the processor. So, now it's time to power up your processor. You will find the 8-pin CPU power connector in your PSU. Just grab that 8-pin power connector and you will find a 8-pin slot very, very, very near to your processor. Just grab that connector and place it in position. It will not be that hard to find it. Now we are done with wiring and we are 100% completed in wiring up our CPU. But if I zoom out, as you can see, this whole thing is a mess. Don't leave it as such, it will not be cool at all. So what you need to do is just pick up your cable ties which came along with your cabinet and tie up all the wires to make your CPU wiring look little cool. Now it's the most important part and that part is called as testing. For testing whether you have done everything correctly or not, just hook your CPU with your mouse and keyboard and the monitor. When coming to the monitor or the display, when you are using a graphics card, then you need to connect your monitor's DVI or HDMI port to the graphics card. After connecting it, just boot up, that is just start up your CPU and uh, yeah, I have connected everything perfectly. Now in order to check you have corrected every parts perfectly or not, first let us go into the BIOS settings. In order to go inside the BIOS settings, you need to press some keys from your keyboard. That depends upon the motherboard architecture, so for that to go through your motherboard panel. As you can find here, 
Intel Core i7, 8 GB of RAM. Yeah, it's uh, not. It's displaying everything perfectly. So there is nothing wrong with my connection. And now you have built your own main computer. So guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you like this video, you know where the thumbs up button is. And if you dislike the video, just hit on the dislike button. And to stay connected with us, just subscribe. Bye.